Hello everyone and welcome to the first server tour on our new map here. Hooray! So here we are at our spawn base and we already did a lot and if you followed our live stream and I really suggest you to if you want to, to rewatch the first few, uh, few hours on it, um, we will see it in the description. You saw us building up most of this, but yeah, we were working on on, uh, on our first bigger project already and finished it. So that's what we are going to show you now. And just for the people who didn't watch the live stream, I'm just quickly showing you uh, at our spawn base around here now. So. Well, we spawned in a jungle biome, and actually, we should probably quickly take a look at our server map. Um, yeah, I'll blend this in now on the Atmos map, so oh. <laughs> you you can see that there is um, yeah the stronghold and the quad which hut are in the same spot. There's a mushroom island one kilometer at the side of it, very cool. And the spawn itself is in the jungle biome, which is a little bit further south, so like one kilometer away. And yeah, so now let's go back to the in-game mode. And uh, yeah, this is the jungle, so we cut it down a little bit. And well, that's, um, uh, uh, there is not much about uh, this spawn here, actually. We, to, need, to survive at the beginning, we just planted some, uh, pretty much every plant we have at the moment. But this, this space is going to be only temporal. We'll probably remove most of it, but it is at least safe and we are getting every food source. And there are actually like two cool things about it already. So this iron golem spawning cell is also just temporal and it does not give off enough iron at all. Um, well, it's pretty much always, the chest is always empty because someone is directly grabbing out the iron which is in there. So um, the farm is working. It has been producing like 10 stacks already, I guess, but it is way too slow and we are working on something very fancy. You will see this when we finish it, but I think you will be totally blown away if this actually works, what we are working on. It will be very cool, but we'll see. Uh, not too much spoiling yet. Tango is helping us, just saying if you know Tango Tech. And over here, this I would is a that we are helping Tango. It's, we are telling uh, him. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm totally idea sorry, and, sorry, yeah. sorry. I actually, sorry, you're right. Sorry, um, Tango has developed this. I must say all credits to yeah. him. But uh, I just don't don't spoil it. I just wanted yeah, to make it right. It's, it's Tango. Um, just, but just don't talk we about have been working on it or whatever. It's secret. So I messed it up. Um, this chicken farm here, who had the idea, I guess? It's pretty much, um, well, common uh. sense what we used here. Um, it is also just a temporal build up, but it has a cool feature. Unlike the chicken farm you maybe ha may have seen from Dokem or Senkan, better say, which uses this high cobweb tower, this one doesn't need any cobweb and doesn't need any redstone to trigger when the, uh, the baby chickens grow up. It's as simple as it gets. Those chickens here are just producing eggs. They are getting sent to a hopper below. Well, I can probably dig this one away to see it, to show it better. Um, oh, and I broke this redstone here. So. The, uh, which fits it into this dispenser here. As soon as there's something in it, those uh, comparator here will power this redstone, this block, this uh, torch over here, and pretty much activate the clock here, which you can also manually override with this lever here, and to, to simply fire the dispenser. And now let's take a look at the back. Thanks, Pender. Um, well, Unfortunately, uh, two of these glass blocks here are being replaced by a cobblestone. But you can, yeah, you already saw it over there. The baby chicken are just below lava on a half slab. They are getting dispensed over there. And let me just quickly remove the middle here so you can see that they actually are, well, they come from this water source there, stand on top. And uh, as soon as they grow up, they just burn down and give off cooked meats. Some of them are actually still in the water stream, that's why we don't, don't get 100% cooked meat, unfortunately. Yeah, thanks Pender. So we can see it over here. Most of it is cooked and actually everyone grabs out the cooked meat, so the, I would say the cooked meat to uncooked one is more like 80% uh, or so, but um, we'll of course work on this a little bit more. It's just a temporal mock-up to get us food, but this is already producing more food than we actually need, and I think there are around 100 chicken in it. So this is uh, very cool. And will later on be further expanded to a proper chicken farm for trading, I would I would guess. Yeah, because you can out fully auto farm those raw chicken meat and well use it for trading. It really will be pretty cool. Over here, this is something which Tube has built, so I'm just quickly checking this out. 
Ah, uh, a zombie in here. With an egg in his hand. <laughs> oh no, we killed no. him. Sorry. <laughs> no, he was my friend. Yeah, oh. you're always killing Panda's friends. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or Panda. <laughs> or Panda. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that is something new on the server, we didn't show this yet. Look at the tab bar. There is a death counter with the scoreboard in it at the moment. And just saying, <laughs> there is one yeah. person far in the lead. <laughs> I score! <laughs> bing, 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 bing! Although I must admit, Code Raider is doing really a good job here. Uh, that is amazing. Say it, they're going to kill me! <laughs> yeah, PvP is turned on. This I know, is. They killed me several yeah, times. Yeah. This chimney here is, was designed by Tube. Um, we also showed it in the live stream. It turns on when it's night. So at the night, there is a fire uh, within this. Um, building here. I'm pretty sure that he wants, wants to show it to you anyway, but uh, just saying it is using this light sensor here, which is yeah simply triggering the piston there. Let me quickly duck this out so we can show this in action. It's not too much uh, redstone involved, but in case people want to see how it is working. Okay, so here we are. Light sensor, as soon as the signal uh, doesn't reach to the repeater anymore, we turn on the dispenser with a non existing flint and steel anymore. I guess we had too many night and dice, night and days already, so Sean should fill this in again. And it's just retracting the piston when it goes uh, dark again to turn off the fire. So, very simple, but working great, unless there's no flint and steel in it. So, good to know that we have to fix this. Um, we'll do this later on. And then we'll show you in action, maybe. Just quick to demonstrate this is actually working. So here we are in the nether, and over here you can already see how low the distances are actually between those stations here compared to our old server. And that's why we also chose and searched for a seat for so long, just to keep the distances low. So over there, there's the portal, which is going to the uh, main spawn and over here there's the other portal which is at the uh, stronghold and our quad witch hunt so apparently there is currently just four witch huts but you know we are planning to build an epic witch farm over there and we'll see how this is working so here we are in the stronghold you can see it's not been much uh, built on this yet it's just a stronghold and well there is something over, uh, over here. This is the silverfish farm. I would say this was the first XP farm we had on the server here, just to get uh, some enchantments on the live stream. And over here, the silverfish just dropped down to roughly one heart, and you can punch them or use the stone swords to kill them. It is not yeah. very fancy, but it is working. And um, yeah, what's our first source of XP? But now we don't need this anymore because we got something way more fancy in the end. And you can guess what it is. And then the red farm, of course.
and we, well, we didn't re reinvent the wheel with this Enderman farm here, but I think it is somewhat worth to show off, because, well, we try to optimize stuff on an Enderman farm, and it's just a little bit optimized, especially for multiplayer. So let's take a look at it. And first thing you might notice is that it's actually having two blades here. This is mainly a reason that so that two people can farm on it at the same time. And this redstone wire here is those torch towers at the outside are just so far away that they will not leak any light inside the spawn area, uh, inside the spawn pads. And it also looks very regular and very cool in my opinion. And last but not least, um, well, the design itself is just panda standard design. Does anyone have any bolts around so I can throw myself over there? Thank you. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. One and a <laughs> That should be enough. Um. Hopefully it is. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it worked. So the top farm is currently turned off, but it is the standard principle: tripwire above the pistons, enemy being pushed down. There is one. More or less fancy thing here is it is this merger. So if we take a look at it, um, we were testing different setups for the merger, and it turns out that it is m really better if this merger down there, which just shifts the endermen which are spawning on the right side to the left side, so that the down at the blade there's only one row of endermen instead of two, um, is using. Let's show this. Um, tripwire, which is yeah on every level layer, so that only the enderman on the right side trigger it, but also that they won't block off the complete row. So if I would just have two hooks at the side here, you would often get enderman landing on top of the piston. This time it won't happen, and it will always reset itself and fix itself. Uh, so even if an enderman would get stuck, which is actually has never happened as far as I know, he would simply um, when it spawns just free this row again. Um, another good part of this is, well, sometimes the vines do actually grow down on the piston, and this makes the enderman have three hit kill instead of one hit kill. But on the other side, we will later on just put a strength beacon down there so that all the enderman had one hit kill, and this is just happening with a very, very small part of the enderman. And the pistons, um, yeah, they kind of get out unless, uh, unlike sticky pistons, which we tested before, and they were just leaving the blocks behind sometimes. So this is very safe, and we have been uh, farming or enchanting, I guess, 20 pickaxes or more already. So it is definitely working stable, which is always uh, good to know about an event farm. Let me quickly fix the top again, and then we can take a look at the button. So here we are. Hello, Wooby. How are you? And how is your blue helmet doing? <laughs> Very well, thanks for asking. Okay, so by the way, old, old Ganon, um, yeah, we decided to left him on our server for, for this cool intro. And by the way, he also actually applied to one of our former server contests. So he was helping us with this project as well as everyone else, of course. And this is the bottom part of the Enderman farm. Well, it's also very standard, but the cool part of it is, is since it has two blades, we are getting actually enough uh, Enderman down here, and it's really, really, really quick because we also optimize the length of the Enderman farm to give it, yeah, just farming as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, so we can farm together, and below this half slabs here, not everywhere because we don't have the iron yet, but you can already see it. There should be hoppers below, and partially there are already. So for over here, for example, and even below the salt sand. So every ender pearl, which is getting, well, uh, spawned by the enderman and which you don't collect because your inventory is full, is simply getting pushed into these chests here. And we'll later on, my plan is just to have a long chest tunnel just full of ender pearls, just because um, it's cool. <laughs> some people might not know that um, soul sand is a little bit uh, lower than other blocks, um, and that's why the hopper can uh, pick up the ender pearl. If you has, have uh, full blocks there, then it's uh, not able to pick them up yeah. from we the soul. Yeah, demonstrate this. Throw some ender pearls. Yeah, so they are all getting sucked, sucked up just because the soul sand is lower, and there's the, we still cannot accidentally walk into this because the soul sand is higher than the half slab. Same goes for the half steps as well, of course. If we throw something on this, it's getting sucked up. It's perfect. Um, actually, the problem was that the, uh, the hoppers are on the bottommost layer, so we cannot trigger when it's something is in the hopper. But we simply decided to put up a clock, so if the farm is turned on, the clock is running and 
uh, well, uh, turning on some uh, dispensers, uh, droppers here, which shift the items into the hopper up there. Since they actually fixed it so that repeaters won't get stuck in unloaded chunks when you move out, it is not much of a problem and you normally can turn off the farm anyway or reset it in case you need, it, need to. So it's just a nice feature to have uh, yeah, your inventory and the area always clear out of end from enderpulse so to not cause lag and just um, it's also sometimes very annoying and pretty cool. Over here we have Randolph. Hello Randolph. He is really helping us uh, because we don't have a, uh, a region beacon here yet. Since, um, un unless, unlike normal food, if um, you just right click the cow and are hungry, you will never empty this slot, never ever. So you never accidentally get an ender pearl into the slot and throw it while eating, which is actually happening sometimes. And you have an infinite food source over here. Um, we'll use it till. Actually, why don't you turn on the other side? <laughs> Oh yeah, the sound of an empty dropper. Why is it f firing? <laughs> Need to figure that out. Do we actually have something to enchant here? Um, I hope so. So let me actually punch some endermen just for the sake of punching them <laughs> and not getting punched by pandas. Yeah, this enderman, as it has twice the amount of spawn spaces, is really extremely quick. And yeah, holy shit. I guess even four people can work on this more or less effectively. So that's our enderman farm. I think when, well, we will show you this again when it's completely built up just the redstone here. And. Um, well, I guess it's not. I know why it's fi why it's firing simply because it's completely filled up here, and that's why the dispenser cannot uh, put stuff um, further or process the stuff, and that's why we need more chests. <laughs> yeah. So filling up one double chest of enderman uh, of enderman <laughs> throw an enderman. <laughs> filling up one double chest of enderman takes uh, would say a minute in this farm here. So this tunnel will be filled up even if you build it up to the end island, which you can see over there. And if you also noticed, our end platform is actually in the middle of the farm and the end island. So we actually placed the ender portal right in the middle of the enderman farm and the island. And I think this is a very good choice. So the walk distances are always as minimum as possible. And the island is still in reach. And um, yeah, so that's about it about the enderman farm. Let's go back to the surface. Hello everyone and greet Banana. Bananen Krieger! Hooray Banana Warrior! He is back! No, he's actually not back, he is still in New Zealand. And so he is playing on his netbook uh, with an, uh, yeah, on the other side of the world ping and he is trying to move forward at the moment. <laughs> Try to do the next <laughs> step. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, well, you say uh... how much FPS it is? One <laughs> FPM? Yes, 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 come on, do it. <laughs> okay, oh, so oh. <laughs> no, that was the wall. <laughs> yeah, you seem to be very drunk at the moment, but yeah, you're getting there. Over there, there's a portal. Just move through it. Come on, you can do it. So, well, he joined us just to check out our new map here, but he will soon be in German again. So, um, I think so at least. So he told us, <laughs> and then yeah, I think <laughs> help us on our projects again. We are looking forward to it, and really. <clears throat> I want to have banana back. <laughs> You're just getting teleported yeah. each, each second now, I guess. No, you made it through. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. seriously his netbook and his slow connection, which makes him unable to walk, <laughs> which is, yeah, quite funny. Um, so the we'll funny thing is that I actually can can play uh, Minecraft with Optifine, but yeah, on the pre-release there is no oh, current Optifine. version. So, yeah, I have to wait until I can play a little bit more. Okay, that, that's... that's... unfortunate. So, um, this tunnel here is quite long, so I think I'll skip this just to show you guys. Uh, over there you can see the portal already, so... And this is leading to this close by Mushroom Island, so as you can see, the distances are really not a big deal in Nether, especially once we've built up a proper tunnel here, and not this just dug out Netherrack thing. Let's take a look at the island itself. 
well, it is relatively dodge, but nothing else special about it. And I think this is a good place to end the episode. Let's just wait for Banana to arrive and then we'll say goodbye. So here we are on the island and I think this is it for today. Thanks for watching, see you in the next cool episode and let's just throw an enderman on top of this mushroom over there. Let's go! Oh, that was far too far. Damn it. No! Wooby made it! No! <laughs>